Sweet. So what, what we're going to be doing is essentially going over um, everything we need to do to prep your ad account and your page um, before we start running any campaigns. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we can do prior to um, going live with your campaigns that are going to increase the likelihood of um, getting results and lowering the costs initially, you know. Um, there's a lot of things we can do prior to going live. So that's really what we're going to go over on this call. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to do, I, you can see my screen, right? Correct. Okay. Perfect. So I'll screen share, um, for most of this and then we'll switch over to your screen. So that way, um, I can walk you through some stuff that I can't do on my side. If that works for you. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you need. I'm here for you. Okay. Perfect. So this is your, your ads manager. Um, does this look familiar? Is this how it currently is set up for you? Correct. Okay. And then I know that um, these are all of your metrics. Now, the best thing to do is we need to set this up so that way we only have the information that we really need here. Um, and so like what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and like customize a column so we can get all of this like organized because like moving forward, it's going to be easier for us to reference if that's all right. Yep. I did this already for one of my campaigns when I was looking at certain metrics. Okay. Um, but I don't know what metrics you look for. So I'll let you choose what you need. Yes. So the main thing is we're not too worried about errors. Um, cost and return on ad spend controls is not needed. Last significant edit we don't really need. Reach is, yeah, reach is fine. And then we want to bring cost per result up and we want to bring amount spin up and we want, we don't need link clicks. We don't need website purchases. We don't need schedule. We don't need end date. Okay. And we want to put results next to cost per result. Perfect. So now we have our cost per result, the results and the amount spent. So you just set that up for all the campaigns? Yes, this is a, a custom preset so we can like name it and um, you, can, you can end up naming it whatever you would like to. Um, we can just do results. It's only gonna show on my end but um, you'll have to go through and like recreate one and you can title it however you would like. Um, but the best case is just to have the cost per result, the results, the amount spent, and then anything else is really just un unnecessary information at the moment. We do like these three metrics um, because that's going to identify. We're going to be able to cover this later. Why does it not you save even though you're an admin now? It won't show up on your end just because it's, it's dynamic to my specific view. So if you're on your end, you could follow along and then also um, customize your column this way. Okay. And then account overview, How, do you use the account overview? I can't say that I have, no. Okay, so I have I use the account overview um, because it's like one of the most like easiest ways of like really identifying trends and then also seeing like basically everything in an overview, exactly what it says. It's, it's a lot easier to identify how things are going for the week and for the month. And then really being able to just look at your KPIs really easily. I've already gone ahead and set this up with your registrations. Do you know what your registrations are? What that like conversion is? Is that like when somebody schedules or submits an email? That would be, I believe when somebody enters their email on the landing page. Okay. So that's, um, is that the, so it looks like that's the metric you're actually optimizing for. It looks like that's the one you are, um, going for, but that doesn't have to stay that way. Right. It, are you wanting it to change? I don't know. I'm kind of leaning on your expertise to answer that question. Okay. For now, let's leave it as complete registration and then, 
what we'll do is we'll end up getting a conversion for scheduled calls. And then we'll also get a conversion after that um, for people who have, you know, purchased. So that way we can keep track of that information. Okay. So on the account overview, you can press the down arrow, you can type in registrations completed and that'll populate. And then you can type in your cost per registration completed and then your amount spent. Those are the three main ones that we want here. And I've noticed that like these little breaks right here, looks like you've paused, you paused a campaign a lot of times. Yeah. And what we want to do is keep something that's like fluid, like always running, right? Like always on, but like whenever you aren't wanting to spend a ton of money, like we just, you know, lower the budget if necessary, just to keep it running because every single one of these pauses end up resetting the campaign and makes it have to go, you know, through a different learning phase. And okay. so you can see like, this looks like January 19, 2018 looks like when you very first started your campaigns. Sounds about right. And these spikes are like, there's so much fluctuation. Like we have a high, we have 58 then we have 10, you yep. know, it bounces up and down, but right That's here in September. Direction. Yeah. And then right here in, it looks like August and September, like we don't have as much spikes, right? So the plan is basically to have a timeline where it's like spiky, it gets like this, and then it's just flat. Like we want something that's like flat and you're getting the same amount of cost per results every single time. That way we can end up increasing your spend and getting you a lot more results. More predictable results, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So those are the two things that we want to um, set up in terms of like having your metrics and KPIs right in front of you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set this to aside and we're going to go through like, I'd say some fun and cool things, but it's really just basically prepping everything. So that way we can basically save a ton of money on your end initially and get you way more results without even spending a dollar yet. Like, as soon as you turn on your campaigns, we don't have to worry about these like massive fluctuations. Like there'll be a lot less. Okay. I love the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good to me, so, man. So we have, um, the first thing is if you were to click, do you see this button in the top left? Yep. If you click on that and then you see page post, mm. you do. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead and click on page post and then you should see add post. It should automatically select your page and be on this. Okay. Now what this is, is basically all of your ads and all of the people they've reached, the engagement and the IDs unique to each of them. What's really cool about this is we want to go ahead and take all of the people who have seen your ads and like them and make them a page follower of yours because this is going to allow us to reach them one for free organically. And two, if they're following your page and they, they're going to be shown your, they're going to be shown the ad that they've already seen more likely. They're going to see it more often. And then also what's going to end up happening is this is going to increase your engagements on your page, making it more active, which is really good for ranking. Um, and this is also going to help us on an ad level because the more amount of people who follow you, um, the more relevant your page ends up becoming and Facebook's basically going to end up getting you better cost per results because you have a larger following, if that makes sense. It does make sense. However, okay. however, Chase, the thing that we need to be aware of is that I changed business strategies about eight months ago. So some of those real old ads are not going to be relevant like the audience like right now if you look at my page you see go to your other tab next to that one no the tab at the top yep see i'm the men's marriage mentor so i only work with men and some of those old ads were focused on specifics uh about people both male and female right yeah so we need to make sure that the information that you're gathering is relevant to only men. We're not going to be building an audience off of what I'm about to sh what I'm showing you. Um, the, the benefit of this is 
even if it's like not even the, um, even if it's all women, right? What's, if your audience is men and one of the men is friends with one of the ladies who follow you, it's going to say this person follows Philip. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yep. So that's like, that's a benefit. So like the likelihood of somebody being a friend of this person is going to increase substantially the more people you get. So it's going to increase relevance, even if like it's not your audience at all. So it'd be beneficial even if we could find like one to two people who might know somebody who follows your page, if that makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. So with all of these, what we can end up doing is like this one, we could start from the top. We could click here. And when you click on it, it's going to give us the three names of people who've liked this. And if you click on that, there's an invite button. All we simply do, it looks like all of these are, are men, right? Yeah, because that's all the targeting for the... Yeah, and they have children, so they're married. Or they might not be married, I don't know. But we can invite them, right? And you invite those three, three people, they're going to now be invited to follow um, your page. Okay. And we... We're not going to go through every single one, but I mean, like there's some right here, like this one has a ton, like 82. And then this one right here, oh, 49. And then we have 14. And then I know this one down here has like a hundred and something, 155. Like people really like this one. 62 that, shares. That one is irrelevant. Got it. Could you see that? The ad from April. Yeah. That's the old business that I ran. I changed strategy okay. change direction. So that's unfortunately, even though it has huge reach, it's, it's irrelevant. That one would be, Got it. that one you just had would, would. Yeah. Be. So this one would be good, right? Yeah. So you can invite all of these people and that's going to help a lot. We want more followers on your page because um, the larger following you have, anytime somebody from a different, anytime somebody sees your ad and they're like, Oh, Philip has over 10,000 followers. Like, Oh, like that's pretty big. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're going to end up, engaging with your ad and your conversions are going to increase because of that. Now, here's another cool trick. Now, when people are visiting your ads, have you ever gotten like sad faces or angry faces like this? Yep. Yep. So I don't know if you know how ranking works, but these are actually ranked in order. So likes will show up first, love will show up second. And then the third thing that always shows up is um, a wow face. Okay. So if you ever get an angry or a sad face, that can actually end up lowering the amount of people who convert on your um, ad. People get more skeptical when they see an angry face, okay? Yep. So how do we get rid of angry faces? What we're going to do is we're going to hover over like, and we're literally just going to click wow. And then it's going to instantly like cover up any angry faces. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So anytime we see like an angry face here, if you just hover over this and just click wow, it's automatically going to cover up the angry face. So that's going to help whenever, you know, there's that one or two people who do it out of like a hundred. Um, I don't think we're going to find one. looks like we're fine so far, but there will be a time where you see like an angry face and you can just cover it up with a wow. So that's, that's one of those really cool tricks that you can use and that's going to help with conversions. Okay. So I'll go through and do that later. Yes. And then the next thing is, we want to go ahead and go to your page and I don't have access to it right now because I just became an admin. I totally forgot whenever I'm, whenever I'm given admin access, I have to wait 14 days to see these settings. But on your end, if you go to settings on your page, mm -hmm. just let me know when you're there, you should see something right either above visitor post or below it that says verify verification. Do you want me to go right now? Yo, yes, if you can. Okay, hold on. Got a lot running on my computer right now, so it's running kind of slow, unfortunately. So under settings on the page. Yes, you, you know, should see. 
right next to visitor post or something. It should say like verification. Nope. Okay. Um, do you see anything that says verification? No, I even searched the word on the page and it's not coming up. Shortcuts page, visitor post, post and story sharing. It's right under page visibility. It's directly underneath page visibility. I'm looking on another page right now. It goes page visibility and then visitor posts and then posts and story sharing. So I'm showing you an example of another account I have. Do you see how it says page verification right here? Yes. Okay. And you're not seeing that on your end? No. Are you talking Got about, it. oh, you're talking about getting the page verified? Like, you have, yeah, I've, I haven't done that. Right. Yeah. And we're wanting to get your page verified, but the setting should be showing on your end, but that's okay if it's not. I can maybe work on that. Yeah, because what's it, what's going to end up happening is it, it you should. That little blue reach, check mark. Yeah, we want that. That's going to end up helping us with um, reaching more people. Don't it's you need like a certain amount of followers on that for yeah. that to be effective, though? No, you just have to have an LLC. Do you have an LLC? Yeah. Yeah, then you'll get it. You'll get the. We're going to get you verified. Um, the settings should end up showing up within 14 days. I'm assuming because you made me admin, maybe it turned it off for everybody. But if not, um, we're gonna have to reach out to a rep to get that to show up. Okay. Okay. I don't have because access to any, I don't know any of the reps, so that might be something you're gonna have to help me out with. Text with somebody. If okay. we have time, I'll show you how that works. Okay. I'm writing that down so I don't forget. Um, okay, so the next thing is profanity filter. Is that something that you want to end up um, setting to medium or strong? I have it turned off at the moment. Is that out of, is there a reason? Not particularly. I don't really give a shit too much. <laughs> okay, so if somebody's like, F this, you you wouldn't want it. Would would you be fine with that comment on your ad? Um, on my ad, no. All right. Uh, well, if you don't mind, we, we're going to set it to medium. Okay, I just did. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the next thing is, you want to let's see. If you refresh it, it should say profanity filter. Medium. There you perfect. go. And then you see page moderation above it. Yes. Now, there's always comments that are like, there's always going to be one comment that comes in that somebody's like, I don't believe this scam or whatever. Just like bad phrases that you just don't want on your ads. Um, have like thumbs down emojis, basically anything that is just somebody complaining or saying like, this is BS or even if they got on a call and, and was like, no, I didn't like the way this person spoke to me, anything like that, any phrases whatsoever we can type those in here, those words. If it's like, like the word horrible, um, I'm just gonna do one for example. We just press add and it's gonna add the word horrible. And then what ends up happening is anytime somebody types out something like this is horrible, it will automatically hide the comment on all of your ads. It will hide this comment. And, and the cool thing is it's gonna tell the person that they actually made the post and they're going to think that it's being shown to everyone when really it's automatically been hidden and it's not even going to tell them it's been hidden because it's only going to show them that they actually posted it. <laughs> so if you've ever hidden a comment, they can go back and find out that you hid their comment. Now, if you have filters, it automatically hides it and it's going to go ahead and put all of the hidden comments in, a, in basically like a, a filtered box where you can go and look at all the comments that have been filtered and you can unfilter them if you want right? In case it catches something that isn't bad. Okay. okay. And this is going to basically prevent in the future for when we start running your ads, if there's any bad comments or all these like negative things that come up, like 
the last thing you want to do when you're spending like a couple thousand dollars and you know, tens of thousands of people are, you're reaching and there are hundreds of comments. You don't want to have to like be manually turning those off and going through them and like people, you know, Oh my gosh, you turned off this comment and all this stuff. Right. Um, Makes sense. Conversion. Question for you there then Chase. Yeah. What if there's a phrase that somebody puts on there and I don't like it? Can I go back to this page moderation, add that phrase, hit save, and then refresh it? Will it remove that phrase? Yeah. Moving forward, anytime somebody uses it, it'll be, it'll be hidden. But not that one. Not specifically, no. What I usually do is I ban and block that person whenever they put some sort of negative comment on there. Yeah. I mean, you could do that, but, um, that's just such a manual process. And if they end up getting banned and then they're like, you know, make a post on their page and tag you or something, anything like that, it's, it's negative. Oh, also the cool part about this is anytime somebody does make a post, like if you were to ban them and say they went and, um, made a post about you, they could still tag you. Um, but the thing is with this, they can't, they can't even get a post to reach anybody because it, it blocks the phrases if they tag you. That post will not be shown to anyone. So it actually prevents them from doing anything on their personal profile, any reviews, anything. You won't have negative reviews ever because of this. This is like one of the most sneaky and like perfect ways to like basically prevent any negativity and like people just complaining like completely. Blocks, posts, comments, everything, right? It take me a while to come up with some and think about them and add them. You can yeah, leave horrible. I don't care. That's fine. Yeah, and, and really, just any word you want, you could think of. Just, I mean, bad. Like, there's so many little things you could probably put here. But yeah, probably the best case is really when you see comments. You could go back through your old comments. Um, I could show you a way to look at all of your comments without having to, you know, reach each individual post. Um, if you show me that to. real quick before we move ahead. Okay, if we go to inbox. Notifications. Comments and more. Now, here's one of your ads. This is one of your ads. Yep, looks familiar. We have anything in here, let's, here we go. Yeah, right, this will never work. You can literally just take that and put never work. Copy that and then go paste it into your um, filter and you won't have to um, do it again. And, and moving forward, I wouldn't recommend um, responding to anything like these, like anything like this. Um, usually when people see that you're responding, they're less inclined to comment, okay? Because they're afraid of how you're gonna react to them. If that makes sense. Yeah. So for every time you respond, the next person is less likely to comment just because they're like, oh snap, Philip might actually respond to me. So I probably shouldn't say anything. So it, all, <laughs> it helps in some ways, but at the same time, it prevents people who would say something normally that's really nice um, from commenting. So it's like an intimidation thing. So it's, it's, it's a lot better just to have like 100 comments and you not respond anywhere. Because then it also prevents anybody from commenting like, hey, Philip, um, I have a question about this. Does this work? And then like, rather than not respond, if you didn't respond, they're more likely to just go ahead and, you know, submit the application, get on a call with you because they couldn't get a hold of you. I got you. Some people um, actually send a message to directly. Perfect. Instead yeah, of that's good too. posting it yeah, so everybody can see. Yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, you can go through the comments and then, you know, bounce back into settings, apply the filter, um, save it. And if you want, you can basically do it in like a sheet and then export it as like a CSV if you know how to do that, which might I do. Easier. Yeah. Is that using Excel? Yes. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. So we covered, you know, inviting people, also um, applying the wow face over that, and then setting up filters, preventing anybody from seeing um, negative posts on your ads and then also posting any negative reviews and then also verifying your page. So like all of those things right there alone are going to increase your conversions and basically make your ads already better without even having to worry about the copy yet. Like we haven't even did looked at any of this stuff and we're already talking about um, 
things that are going to collectively um, add up to improving everything overall. I have no idea how to get the page verified. I mean, I could probably Google it and figure out some, you know, figure out how to do it through a... You just want, if it shows up, it normally does, it'll start showing up. A lot of times people don't have access to as much stuff. Like my business manager looks like the total opposite of yours. Like mine's totally filled out. I have so much other stuff. Like they get, Facebook gives you a lot of access to different things that you'd be surprised about. Like, yeah, okay. I mean, there's just so many things. But how do I get the page verified though? It'll, it'll end up showing up. I, well, why hasn't it shown up yet? I mean, it's been, I've had the page up for a few years. Yeah, it might've already been there, but I think because you gave me admin, it's not going to show anymore. The other likely reason is because you might not have an at name. Oh, you do. So you're, yeah, it'll show up. Let's, let's, let's check back in 14 days. I mean, even if we had um, six calls in between then, I mean, we still have calls to be able to go back and see, right? We'll, we'll get that set up. Um, and then you have your blue verification. Do you want to reach out to a rep and ask them for that? Or at least to get me in touch with somebody that would. If you want to go through the process of how, the, how to do that, I can show you. Sure. Go ahead. We can go to, we'll just type in Facebook support and then we'll go to the help center. And then when you scroll down, um, they update this so often. You'll click visit ads help center. Get started. Did you see that? Get started. Yep. This is how you're going to get in contact with a person. And then I'm going to show you the ways that um, it's basically going to try to filter us out. So it's like a puzzle, right? We have to click all the right buttons just so that way we can get in contact with a person. So um, Probably now what we want to do, tools. Yeah. Now we, what we want to do is um, go to business pages. pages. Yeah. And then we're going to go to request a gray badge for my page. And it's going to give you like, basically it looks like a, um, a way to do it. You see this yep. call, yep. call me now. And then also if you want to get in contact with a person, all you do is hit chat with representative estimated time is five minutes. And you'll get a hold of somebody. Okay, cool. Beep. Got it. And it looks like just publish profile picture, cover photo settings, general click page verification. That's interesting why it's not there. And then phone bill or upload a picture of an official document, which is your LLC. Your LLC will get you verified super quickly. Yeah, not a problem. I've got all that paperwork. Perfect. So now that is how you can contact a rep and you'll get your little um, gray verification, which will help out a lot. I'll work on that. Okay. And then we have our story right here. Your story. Yep. And when I click see more, um, we don't have a link. We want to put a link on your story because people will click on this and then there's no link. So we want to get them a link. It's a small one, but um, a lot of times people see your ad and before they click on, you know, learn more or register, they're going to click on your page. You don't want to lose them on your page. Should I put a link to just like my home page or to the call page? Um, whichever one's more value to, more valuable to you. In terms of conversions, basically like that with our ads, whichever page we end up driving them to is probably going to be the page you're going to want to have here. Well, that page could be different. I mean, that's just a landing page, right? Yes. For now, let's just get a link there. And then whenever we start building out your ads, we can change it later. Okay. All right. Um, do you, do you like yourself? Do you like your, um, do you like the content? <laughs> you like? Yeah. Do you like yourself? Yeah. What do you mean? It, it's a serious question. I was just wondering if you like yourself because if so, you should go ahead and start liking your own photos. <laughs> I've heard that's kind of conceited. 
No, it, it, it helps because people, people follow crowds. So like people congregate, um, anytime they see somebody else do something, Hey, I saw my friend do this. I'm going to like it too. Things grow faster when other people are doing them. Um, if there's the first person who clicks this like button on